Hello there and welcome back to the channel. This is Mel's Gaming here with another The Hunter Call of the Wild video. Now this video is going to be talking about how I grind for Whitetail here on Rancho Del Arroyo in search of great ones. Now I want to start off this video by saying this. There is no correct way of actually grinding Whitetail. As long as you're killing Whitetail one way or another, then you're doing the right thing. I just really want to say this because there is different methods out there. Not every method is going to be the same as what I do, um, but there is going to be people that do the same as I do, but if you do differently, that's absolutely fine. At the end of the day, everything boils down to, if you're killing Whitetail, especially you're killing Bucks, and you're getting those respawns, that is it. That's what it all comes down to at the end of the day. I am, however, going to go through and show you the equipment that I use, my setups, each lake that I go to, all of those kind of things in this video, and I'll talk a bit more about what I actually do as well. So let's start off with the equipment. So in my inventory here, we'll start off, and you can see that in the slot one, I have my Deer Grunt Caller. Now you can also use the Bleat or the Snort Wheeze, I just like using the Grunt. As you can see, affected species, it is for Whitetail. So as long as you're using a call that will bring in the Whitetail of those ones that I mentioned, you will be absolutely fine. Now there's only a couple of um, instances that I actually have to use the caller around the map, but I'll show you guys how I actually use that at one particular zone that helps me then to see all of the animals in that zone before I actually take a shot. But as I mentioned, which caller of those that you actually use, it really doesn't matter, but I do recommend having a whitetail call on you. Now, the first gun that I'm carrying is the 22. Now, obviously, we can't shoot whitetail with the 22. They are far too big of an animal to shoot with the 22. However, you can do the 22 trick using this gun, which is where you fire a single pellet near the animal that you're wanting to make go alert so that you can get a better shot on that animal. So I do recommend carrying the 22. Now, in slot three, you can see we have the M1. Now, the M1 is probably the most important gun in this entire loadout. I would not go grinding right tail without this gun. It is absolutely incredible. You can get two, sometimes even three deer down before they even get a chance to flee using this gun. It is incredible. And as long as you make a vital hit, they will go down almost instantly. Normally, they go straight down if you double lung them. So honestly, this is the most important gun in the entire loadout. And you can see it is a DLC weapon. You get this in the Smoking Barrels weapon pack. And I definitely recommend that for grinding Whitetail. Now in slot four, we have the third gun of this loadout and it is the 300. Now again, we can actually shoot Whitetail with the 300 and get integrity. However, we can shoot Whitetail with the 300 if we do not care about integrity. And the reason I use this is for when I have a group of Whitetail that are fleeing or I just want an animal to drop, whether it's a doe or a small bug and I just don't care about the score or the integrity. If I need that animal to drop, even if it's, you know, a shot from behind going through into the intestines, the 300 is what I will use. I will literally shoot fleeing deer in, in the pelvis area. It will go through the intestines and it will kill them within a few seconds. So that's extremely handy. Of course, we also have the binoculars. I'm using the Apex 7x42 binos, which are really good. They are range finding as well. But the other important piece of equipment in this loadout is the tents. Now, tents are going to be really, really helpful when it comes to whitetail grinding and actually making your route efficient. And honestly, the more tents you can use, the better. But if you don't have any tents, you can do it without tents. It's not, necess it's not necessary at all. As long as you're killing whitetail, as I said, then that's basically the only really necessary thing. But tents are going to be extremely handy. The first great one grind I ever did was on Leighton Lakes before Rancho even came out and I only had a couple of tents that came with the base game when I bought it on PC. So that's how I started off and then I just bought tents along the way and you could do that easily on Rancho as well considering how much more accessible and easy uh, whitetail are actually to find on Rancho. If you don't have tents you can just build them up as you go along and get that cash and then just place one at a time. 
So the next piece of, of, of equipment that we need to talk about is of course tripods. Now I didn't actually have any in my loadout there as all of my tripods are currently out on this reserve. So you can see I have two tripods here at the end of this piece of land and I use these to shoot the whitetail from all the way around this lake. These two tripods are my best tripods at this lake. And you'll notice that my tent is actually almost directly on top of the need zone. Well, what that means is those whitetail won't spawn in until I get to about 210 metres away and then I can watch them spawn in and they'll be completely unaffected by the fact I've just shot whitetail all around the rest of the lake. So I will then hop onto a tripod on the opposite side of the lake and shoot those whitetail. But let's now see the M1 in action, and you're going to notice something very specific I do here. Watch the doe that I'm going to shoot second. So I take the buck, and then I'm going to take that doe. Now, you'll have noticed that I took that doe as she was lifting her head up. I waited until she had her head fully down and drinking before I took that shot. That is one of my best tips. Wait for the second animal that you want to shoot to have its head fully down because the time it takes them to lift their head up, it will give you so much more time to get a second shot in. But you can see this is my setup for this first lake here. This is where I start all my whitetail routes. You can see I actually have three tripods on this particular lake and one tent. I have found this to be pretty, pretty well um, suited to actually dealing with this lake. And as I have mentioned, and I will talk about more, I am going to take out every whitetail I can possibly see. Bucks, does, big, small, it doesn't matter. I'll take out all of them from those tripods. Now moving over to this lake here, you can see I have a tent over here by the lookout point, and then I'll run along to this tripod and shoot the whitetail that appear in this zone. You can see it actually says mule deer, but that is a whitetail zone there. And I'll also shoot whitetail that can appear near that feed zone. And then I have a tent here and a tripod here to shoot the whitetail that appear here where I'm placing the waypoint there, which is a, is a little bit of a, a decent length of shot, but it's not too bad. Then I have a tent here that I'll fast travel to, and then I'll walk along, it's, sort of the, it's a bit of a ridge, and look down to where the whitetail drink here and shoot those. I'll then walk along to this tripod here, pick up those whitetail along the way, and shoot the whitetail in this zone. And then you can see there's some other zones along this side of the lake. So what I'll do is I'll fast travel back to this tent here, where I have placed my waypoint. I'll walk along to this tripod here. I'll shoot the whitetail in this zone right beside it. And I'll also shoot from that tripod the whitetail in this zone. Again, a little bit of a longer range shot, but no problem at all with the M1 or the 300. And I've found that to be a pretty effective way of dealing with that lake. Now this little lake here, well it's more of a pond, you can see I have a tent then a tripod that I'll go to and I'll sit in this tripod and call the whitetail out from here. Now you can see at the moment that there's no zone there but we're actually going to pick up that zone again later. I ended up deleting it because I caused so much hunting pressure killing so many deer here before but as I'll talk about a little bit more later in the video, deleting zones on Rancho really isn't a problem. So we'll then move over to this lake. Now this lake can be a tricky one to deal with. So I'll start off at this tent here, go to this tripod here, and then shoot the whitetail in this zone here. You can see there's some hunting pressure there from a couple that I shot. Then I'll fast travel over to this tent normally, but if there are whitetail where I have just placed the waypoint, I'll shoot them from where I have just placed the other waypoint, so that I have a view there. And I can also check if there's whitetail in this zone. This zone normally only ever has a couple in it anyway, so if they're there I normally try and just get rid of that zone as I really don't like it. But then, as I mentioned, I will fast travel to the other side of that lake and then pick up the whitetail I have shot. You can see hopefully how having that tent there does allow me to get to any whitetail I've shot on the other side of this lake so much faster. And then normally I'll fast travel back over to this tent here and I'll check around to see where the whitetail are in these zones as they can be quite hidden by brush. And then what I'll do is I'll shoot from this tripod to this zone over here and down into this zone that I'm going to show now as well down here. So you can see that tripod actually does have visibility onto both of those zones and I can shoot the closer zone without actually spooking the deer in the further zone. I'll then walk around in a loop as I'm showing here to this tripod, picking up the deer I've shot along the way and shoot the deer in this zone. 
And then I will pick up those deer there and drop into this tripod and shoot the deer in this zone. So you can see how it works as a circuit where I'm basically just moving around from tripod to tripod picking up animals. And you can see that then completes that lake. Now, this little lake, if if any whitetail ever show up around here, I just annihilate the zone. I hate this lake so much, it is a pain to work with. So I have this tent here where I will fast travel in, check and see if there's any whitetail in there, and if there is, then I just get rid of all of them. So I really don't ever deal with that lake. But then we move on to this lake, which has been actually the spot where two of my great ones have spawned in. They were actually at this lake. And you can see I have a tent here. And I will then, from that tent, walk down towards here where I've placed the waypoint. And there's always a whitetail zone there. And you can see at the minute it is deleted. That is absolutely fine. I will shoot every deer in there that I can see. And I will sometimes go down and actually chase them back around into this sort of a ravine. And it makes just an absolute... It's just awesome for shooting so many deer. If you can get them to go down in there, it doesn't happen every time. But if you can get them to go in there, you can shoot so many deer. I will then fast travel back to that same tent and check if there's any whitetail here where I've placed this waypoint. There's not always. They sometimes pop up there, sometimes they don't. I will then fast travel to this tent and walk to this tripod. And you can see there is a need zone across here. It says bighorn sheep, but it is a whitetail zone as well. So I can shoot those and then I'll jump into this tent, pick up those whitetail I've just shot there. And then I will jump back again to that tent and I will run down here to that um, need zone that actually says bobcat. And from my waypoint, I will shoot the whitetail as they run around the edge of the lake here. Because it gets them out of the brush and it is a really easy run through to actually shoot them in. And actually, the last one of the last great ones I shot, actually, I think it was my third one, was actually in that particular zone and I saw it as it ran through. I do have a tripod and a tent here, just in case any whitetail do get past me, I can jump to those two, um, those two structures there, just for a little bit of added security, but I very rarely use them. I will then fast travel back to this tent, I will run along here, and sometimes there's whitetail that actually drink down right in here, that's where my uh, second great one spawned, was down in here. But again, those are zones that I normally get rid of or just, you know, I will just shoot as many as deer as I physically can. But I will then walk to this point and shoot the whitetail in this zone. Again, no problems actually getting there. That works very, very well for me. And if I see any more deer coming back, I can always fast travel back to that tent and then shoot them again. I need to reiterate again that shooting out whitetail zones on Rancho is not a problem. I shoot out my zones almost every run if I can. Like if I could if I could, that would be ideal. But you can see with this lake here, I go from the outpost to the tripod and shoot the whitetail that drink in about this area. The zone doesn't sit exactly where the zone is. But there's normally whitetail there, and if there's whitetail where I'm showing now in that zone icon, I'll run down to here and then run back up, and then I can actually see them from here. And there's normally only two or three deer in there anyway, so I can just shoot those without really any worry. Sometimes they'll drink in the tiny little lake um, underneath, but you, as I said, you can just shoot, shoot away at those and try and get rid of them, because that zone is awful to try and manage. Now, taking a look at this lake here. This lake can be interesting for me. I initially spawn in at this tent normally, and then I will walk along to this tripod, and if there are any whitetail here, I will shoot those, but they sort of come and go a little bit with this zone, and then I'll pick those ones up, go to this tripod, and from that tripod, I will call in the whitetail that drink in this zone here. And I, of course, will then shoot those and pick them up. I will then fast travel back to this tent. And if there's any whitetail that are drinking in this zone, again, this is a zone that I absolutely hate and will get rid of any chance I possibly can. And then I will go to this tripod here and shoot the deer that drink in about this area here. They will pop up sometimes. 
and again it's normally only a few deer so just go into that tripod and shoot those and then hop into this tripod after picking those ones up and shoot the whitetail in the next zone down here so you can actually shoot these ones down here as well if they pop up so this is a really good way to actually see two zones in one go but this tripod is mainly for shooting the whitetail in this zone across here where I'm dragging my cursor hopefully you guys can see sometimes they don't drink exactly on that um, icon so that's why I'm sort of keeping it back a little bit but sometimes I'll get deer that drink here and here too and sometimes they choose to drink here again it's normally only like a maximum of about five deer I'll shoot those out if they form a bigger herd then I will see how it goes but then we get back to this lake and the cycle has completed and any hunting pressure I have um, caused at this initial lake from shooting as many deer as I possibly can is normally all gone by the time I get back here after doing a whole run now as I have mentioned causing hunting pressure on Rancho is not an issue if you delete a zone that zone is going to come back it's not like Leighton where these deer can drink over the entire map the whitetail will only drink at those lakes I have shown you guys in this video they do not drink anywhere else on the entire map so if you delete a zone that zone is going to come back on that lake somewhere so you really don't need to worry about losing zones I do it all the time and I still get all the deer that I need to actually get respawns now I do something a little bit different than most people I will shoot every whitetail I possibly can you can see there I'm using the 300 on a stray doe that got past me and I will shoot the does and shooting does doesn't cause problems as some people think it does it really doesn't cause any problems the reason that I personally shoot does is because I like to wipe an entire herd out and get an entire herd to freshly respawn now I have had significant uh, positive effects from this I know that there's a lot of people that say you know you probably shouldn't shoot does or don't do it this way and that's absolutely fine I'm just saying this is what I've seen work for me. A lot of my max weight bucks have come from doing stuff like that. In fact, I have one in the video um, where I actually shot, I had a super herd effectively spawn of about 30 deer all in one zone on, on that initial lake where I start off my runs. It was incredible. And in them, amongst them, was a max weight buck. And that was from shooting all the deer at that lake. And that's seemingly quite a recurring theme for me when I do this kind of whitetail annihilation is to get those really good respawns back and as you guys saw in the last great one video I posted at that lake I had two diamonds a rare and the great one spawn all at the same time and uh, in the run before I had annihilated every single deer I could possibly see at that lake if I could see it and get a shot into it I would doesn't matter if it's not a great shot like you can see these guys it's a couple of them haven't got the best shots in them but they're still going to die and I'll pick them up once they have died they normally don't go that far anyway so it really really doesn't matter but again I want to reiterate as long as you kill whitetail and especially the males I you know we know that it will respawn from a buck that's pretty much it taken you know that it's going to be a buck that respawns into the great one but as long as you're shooting whitetail, you're making progress, you really don't need to do anything fancy. If you don't want to follow my method with annihilating entire herds and you just want to take one or two bucks, that's absolutely fine. It, you know, getting a great one is a luck based thing. How did I get one in two and a half days? Was it my method? Probably not. It was just the, the, the luck of the draw, the, the buck, the one buck I killed it rolled the right numbers, I guess, somewhere in the system to spawn as a great one. And that's what it really comes down to. So in my eyes, the more deer you can kill, the more chances you're getting at one spawning as a great one. Now, from what EW have said, males will respawn as males and females will respawn as females. So in some people's eyes, taking out the females is completely unnecessary. And maybe it is. I have just found that when I have been hunting, if I end up leaving females behind, it seems almost like they delay the respawns happening. Because once I have shot out most of the animals in the zone, if there's one buck and a couple of does left, 
it almost feels like those respawns are kind of put on hold. And once I shoot those animals out, I get a fresh new herd in that zone. And I've seen that a few times. As I have said, and I will say it again, this is not the best method, perhaps. You know, there's no... Unless EW comes out and says, hey, this is exactly what you need to do to, to get a great one. Everything is theory. Everything is trial and error. It's in and of itself an experimentation to see what works best for you. For me, this works best. I've got four out of my five great ones using this method. The only one that I haven't gotten using this method was on Leighton, where it's a completely different ball game. This is specifically for Rancho. I'm talking specifically about this map. And the whole difference between Rancho and Leighton is the fact that the Whitetail are so limited on their areas. So if you do delete a need zone, it doesn't matter. This is actually a need zone that when I was showing you guys the map at that tiny little sort of pond type lake that's really, really small, I deleted the zone. I've come back and the zone's back here again. And I will delete this zone in this video. And I know that within a run or two, it's going to be back there again. So I would rather kill as many deer as possible if the, if the opportunity presents itself. And you're going to see why that opportunity presented itself. And I'd rather do that and get as many fresh respawns uh, going through that system as possible than leaving deer that could perhaps slow something down. And I don't know how the respawns work. No one knows exactly how the respawns work except from EW. As far as we know, we just know that you've got to kill Whitetail and get respawns to get a great one. So as long as you guys, if you're wanting to get a great one, go out on your map and shoot. It doesn't matter if you shoot 10 deer a day. You never know. That one could, that one of those bucks that you've shot could respawn as a great one. If you take out an entire herd, maybe you get some really good respawns in that. So that's what I found worked for me. And you guys can see the evidence I've shown with having multiple diamonds in a, her in a herd many times now. I think I've had a two, two level threes in a herd like three times now. Or, you know, multiple rares at the same lake. Everything like that. So, this is all just what works for me. And you can see this particular zone is where I really use the cooler to its full effect. To pull these whitetail out of the brush and so I can get a really good look at what's here. Something I will note that I do do is I do prioritise bucks over does. If there is a group of deer running away, I will shoot those bucks first. Because as I mentioned, we know that it's going to have to be a buck that respawns as a great one. That seems to be a given based off of what EW has said in the past about males respawning as males and females as females. But if you get a situation like this where there's a doe that's stuck or you wipe out a couple of bucks and there's just one doe left walking around, I will shoot that doe with absolutely no problems. There was a lot of questions being asked um, recently about whether shooting females will mess up your respawns. Absolutely not. It, they will, it will not mess up your respawns at all, I can promise you that. It, they, if anything, it gives you more money, and when it's a situation like this where they're just frozen, why not take these extra animals along the way? Because this happens seemingly quite a lot on Rancho. And I've noticed that this bug in particular seems to happen if you use a cooler and then spook the deer. Where they'll then get frozen. I've had it a number of times. And in fact, where I, when I deleted this zone previously, it was because all of the animals, which was about 20 to 30 deer, came out into this field. And after I took the first shot, they all bugged out. So I just walked around and shot every single deer. And yeah, there wasn't anything particularly great here when the zone came back, but I've had multiple diamonds here from shooting as many deer as possible, so who knows really. But if I had to give you guys one piece of advice, if you want to start a great one grind, it's do what works for you. Don't think, oh, well, I, I should do this because this is what so-and-so did, or I should do this is because of what so-and-so did. Do what works for you. If you find that you want to try this, what I do, and it works really well for you, fantastic. You know, that's great. But if you don't get perhaps the results you're looking for, then maybe try something different. As long as you're actually killing whitetail, especially those bucks, but as long as you're killing whitetail, 
you're doing the right thing. You're doing what needs to be done for grinding for a great one. It is as simple as that at the end of the day. Kill Whitetail, get respawns. Kill Whitetail, get respawns. So I hope that if you guys are out there and you're wanting to start a great one grind, that this hopefully gives you guys a little bit of insight into what I do and how I feel about everything and I hope that I have been clear in everything I've said in this video. If you are unsure about anything, please feel free to leave me a comment and I will answer you as fully and as best as I can. Thank you so so much for all the support on the channel and for all the watching of these videos. I really appreciate appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next one.